Hey everyone, it's Greg Monty, and I wanted to dedicate this journal to all of my dedicated colleagues in the education profession, because I'm here to report on what the past two weeks returning from the holiday break were like. And I'm recording this on the first day of the third week. And it's been such a whirlwind that even up to today, there have been numerous changes and uncertainties that keep following us and keep following our students as well as the school system attempts to adjust to the COVID pandemic, a pandemic that has been going on for two years now. So it's been a real whirlwind. And I wanna salute all of my colleagues in this profession for their dedication, their perseverance, and their true character. This really is a challenging profession on its best days. And since the start of the pandemic, it's been at its most unpredictable and it has demanded the most of your flexibility and your adaptability. So from one colleague to another, I respect you and thank you. And I've spent some time talking to colleagues in the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, to see what their experience has been like and to see if it's any similar to my own. I can tell you that when I came back from holiday break, the hallways were thinner, the classes were smaller because so many of our students tested positive for COVID. And unfortunately, so did a lot of our colleagues. We had to combine classes in certain schools. And then of course we experienced uh, a brief but pretty challenging snowstorm one morning when we first came back. And in fact, I really have to hand it to all of the teachers who made it through that snowstorm in at, during a pandemic, no less, because they didn't want to disappoint their kids. And they were returning to schools that have been drastically affected by COVID. Colleagues have told me that after school programs have been canceled. We have sporting events where there are no spectators. And yet our kids dedicate themselves tirelessly to following the tutelage of our dedicated coaches. And they perform at their best and they are hoping that they can get back to normalcy when we've got cheering crowds and a lot of school pride and school spirit. I've also spoken to teachers who have told me classes have been combined. Teachers are making lunches in some schools. This is a very challenging time. And it is a reminder that until you have done this job, you probably don't know this job. And while that may be true for a lot of professions, education is uniquely challenging. And I really have a lot of respect for all of my colleagues and our students who continue to soldier on. It really is impressive. And we're gonna need that dedication and that tenacity because COVID is still very much a threat uh, and it's gonna to continue to challenge us. Now we have, again, with each new day, new potential policy changes being considered. I'm talking to you at the start of the third week since we returned. And as I speak, the DOE is in contact with parents, teachers, city hall proper to try to figure out a remote option. This raises a lot of questions for my colleagues and I about who is actually going to teach these classes and how if a remote option is going to be extended to students who are COVID negative. Up until today or up until this point where it's being dis discussed, the remote option was reserved for students who tested positive for COVID. So once again, our adaptability is being challenged and tested. And I know we're gonna meet that challenge, but the question is, what is the truly fair working experience for our teachers and what's the best education for our kids? Because everybody knows that the best education for our kids remains to in a classroom where our ch children are being challenged and our teachers are being respected. That alone presents its set of challenges and workloads. So as I talk to you now, we're waiting to hear what, if anything, will happen to the remote option. And this is very challenging. I've also spoken to teachers who have said they wish there was more testing going on. We follow a formula where only a percentage of each school is tested, but a lot of teachers, a lot of other educational colleagues, social workers, secretaries, school aides, paraprofessionals, they would like to be tested more regularly as well. And they wanna make sure that they're staying safe and that their students are staying safe. I've heard from teachers that sometimes our younger students, you know, they struggle with keeping the mask on or putting the mask on uh, at all. That's such a weird reality for us. 
it may have been going on for two years, but it really feels like only yesterday, let's be honest. And in fact, given the challenges we're facing, it feels like we're still very new at this, although we have come a long way. And I'm very grateful uh, personally and professionally that so many gains have been made that we are hopefully seeing more people protect themselves and fewer people get diagnosed. And obviously, uh, we, we don't want to see too many people. We don't want to see anyone lost to this terrible pandemic. So I really am impressed with my colleagues and our students because of so much of what they have shared with us and so much of what they've endured. Again, when we returned from holiday break, so many teachers were out that I've spoken to teachers who have said that 15 out of 20 students were out and 15 teachers were out in a lot of schools, 50% absence rates. This can be really debilitating for a learning community. So there's still a lot of confusion moving forward about how we're going to educate our kids and how we're gonna do it safely. And I hope we get some answers because everybody deserves them. If there is a remote option, what does it look like? And how will students be assessed so that teachers know if real learning is going on? And really, that's also a question for dedicated parents. So we still have a lot of questions that remain, but the one question that has been answered in my view is that there is no questioning the dedication of New York City public school educators and their families and the students who rely on us every day. So I'm hoping that in the new year, as January progresses, we get closer to normalcy by getting the answers that we need and creating a more predictable learning environment for everybody. This job's unpredictable on its best days, but it should be unpredictable for all the right reasons. Students who are achieving goals they never thought possible, creating projects and getting test scores they never thought they could because of the support that they're getting from us and from their families. Those are the victories we want. We want school dances and we want school sports. We want the prom. They want graduation and we want to celebrate it with them. So I'm hoping that in the months ahead, we get there. But until then, the challenges remain and the questions continue to mount. So I'm just grateful for my colleagues and supervisors, our students and their parents, and my union who continue to fight for this embattled but absolutely fulfilling profession. And again, we're going to get through it together, guys, but we got to stay safe. So please, Mask up, stay safe. If you feel sick, stay home, but never ever count out the tenacity or the dedication of our teachers. Thanks guys. And I'll be back soon with another journal to let you know how it's going.